Hello. Hello, 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 hello. And I don't know what it is. I think it might be TikTok. My face looks kind of... That's it. Somebody asked me the other day why my teeth are so white. And although I do think my teeth are fairly white, I don't think they're as white as they probably look on TV, on TV, on TikTok. And my skin doesn't look as tanned. I almost look like a certain political party leader. Minus the hair. <laughs> oh, hello, Venti. Hello, Chugger. Well, go to sleep. Somebody said they're about to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Do not stay up for coffee with Ken. Or I dare you to try to stay up for coffee with Ken. My calming, relaxing voice will soothe your mind and soothe your body. And you will drift off into a deep, deep, deep sleep. This whole coffee with Ken thing it sucks. It's a lot of work. I'm just kidding. It doesn't suck. It's a lot of fun. Uh... But I think I could have been a ASMR or hypnotist or something. It's easy to package ASMR or hypnotism and say, talk about manifesting and, you know, this and that. Hard to have a daily talk show where you talk about very little of substance. Yet while on your journey of talking about things of little or no substance, you come across gr things of great substance just by sheer happenstance. Yes, Jay, I do look like Mr. Clean, and I also look like Bruce Willis. Somebody at work told me the other day that I sound like a guy on The Simpsons, um, what did he say, like Stan Brockman? I don't know, apparently the uh, newscaster on The Simpsons. It's the first I'd heard of that, but I've heard Mr. Clean and I've heard Bruce Willis, but I appreciate both. But good morning. Uh-oh, oh, it's right here. Don't worry, I panicked for a second. Good morning. Good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. It is uh, Friday morning. It is September 20th. It is 5.23 a.m. Happy Friday. It's a little show I've been doing for quite some time. It's a show about me talking, sharing feelings, sharing kind of the ups and downs we have in life, kind of just sharing a little bit about life. Sharing somewhere between 20 minutes and an hour and a half, maybe every morning as I go live here on TikTok, getting my day started, telling you how my day was yesterday. What I speculate at 520 something on a late September morning, my day might look uh, like going forward. But for those that have been watching a while, you know it's not just a show about me talking. You know it is also a show about me uh, sharing my love of coffee. <laughs> I think I'm in a good mood today. And with that in mind, I got a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me and I am so excited to have my first sip at this fairly early hour. Especially for a man that worked last night and didn't get home till 9.30. I got home, I ate some dinner. What did my dinner look like? Oh, it was mac and cheese and hot dogs. It was tasty. Uh, uh, but fell asleep probably about 11 or so. And when 4.30 came around this morning, it was a little bit earlier than I wanted it to be. 
but I do not control the time nor the weather. It's raining a little bit outside this morning. It was kind of exciting. I hadn't heard the sound of rain on my window in quite some time. Hello from Baltimore. But let's get back to the coffee. Hey, check it out. I'm seeing double. It's like double mint gum. Coffee with Ken merch. Oh, yeah. I got to reorganize that. My church started selling merch the other day. I got a text from my church about merch. Church and merch rhyme. I don't know that I need church merch. You know what I mean? I mean, you probably don't need Coffee with Ken merch either. You may not need Under Armour merch or Nike merch or Smiley Face merch, but we still buy it. And therefore, I see why businesses sell it. I, I don't know. I like my church. <laughs> Maybe it'd be evangelizing a little bit wearing the merch. I could come in and <laughs> do my show wearing the church merch. They should give me free merch to wear the church march. I drive jokes into the ground. And this isn't even a joke. This is just a obvious realization that church and march rhyme. So it's fun to say them next to each other repeatedly. I mean, it's probably not fun to listen to. So my apologies, but let's get back to the coffee. For those who have been watching long, you know it is not just a show about me joking about church and merch. It's also a show about me sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I have a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me. And I'm so excited to take my first sip at this very early hour. My hope is wherever you are and whatever you're doing, wherever you may be, whether you're in Baltimore or Mississippi, or Chicago, Illinois, or Yellowstone, Wyoming. I hope you have a nice hot cup of coffee in front of you. Cheers to us. I gotta take another sip. That first sip slipped beyond my taste buds. Uh, it's a pumpkin spice. It's got a little more of a subtle pumpkin spice flavor than I'm used to. Perhaps I made it with less grounds than normal. Let's try it again. Uh, I'll tell you, even the subtle hints of the pumpkin and the spice is really nice. It's really nice. It's mid-September, mid to late September. Season's going quickly. Months are going quickly. Apple picking's probably going full bloom. I haven't even thought of going. Pumpkin patches are probably get, just getting ready for Halloween. And uh, I'm drinking pumpkin spice coffee. Oh, and it's good. Hello, Ike. Hello, Kent. Hello, user that is joking that we would have to spell merch differently to truly, I mean, I think it can rhyme with another word without the same spelling, but I like the way you're thinking. I like the way you're thinking a whole bunch. So anyway, how you guys doing? How you feeling? How'd you sleep? I tell you what, I slept well. I slept well. Woke up early though. Um, again, woke up about 4.30 this morning after uh, working last night. Going in early today. Was thinking about it as I was kind of getting my coffee started. Hello, young 
uh, get my coffee started and uh, get my morning started that I'm going into work early today. I work at a restaurant here in uh, Naperville, Illinois, where I'm coming at you from. And uh, opening the restaurant this morning. Going to be in at 1045 and might work a double and <laughs> might be there all day and a good chunk of the night. I must say it was a daunting task that I have ahead of me as I was getting my day started this morning. Can't say I was super optimistic about the how the day was looking as I was getting going. I like what I do. I like the people I work with. I like my customers. Uh, the money's good. Uh, but just the thought of being at the restaurant from 10-ish to maybe 10 on the other side sounded like a long day today. Probably will be a long day. I'm 56 years old. I got aches and pains. I was working them out this morning. Uh, my left ankle's still sore from a uh, motorcycle wreck I had. <laughs> I don't know, about six weeks ago now. My joints aren't quite as lubricated as they were when I was younger. And uh, working last night and then going in today. It's going to be okay, but I just need to talk through it a little bit. Sometimes talking through it helps me with my uh, anxiety. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So let's have a little more coffee. Oh, that's pretty tasty. That was pretty tasty. Oh, good morning, Julie Flanagan. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? I have random people that I don't know saying weird things. And it's nice to see a friendly name on my list. Maybe that's the problem when you go live really early. Um, you have random people, maybe from other parts of the world, saying random things. Maybe that's part of the danger of going uh, live on a social media network and bearing your soul. Bearing your soul. Hello, travel buddies. How are you? But... Uh, so welcome aboard, Julie Flanagan. Mm. I talked about it a little bit yesterday, and I talk about habits all the time on my show, and kind of a reminder for me to uh, keep instilling uh, good habits in my day and uh, keep up the good habits I'm doing. And this morning or yesterday, I was talking, to, maybe it was two days ago, how good stretching feels and how I don't know why I'd gotten away from it. But more than just stretching, uh, kind of calling it yoga. I just posted a video on a different social media platform about yoga. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I post a lot of the videos I post. I think people see the title because I think brevity is a key when it comes to content creation in a title. And I titled the video Yoga. And it was me sitting here, maybe in the same exact chair, about a month ago, talking about how I still uh, find such value in, in practicing yoga and how it's a way of life. And, you know, the video is maybe 45 seconds. And I think it ends kind of well. And I have this melodic yogic music playing throughout. But it's only a 45 second video. And I think a lot of uh, yogis probably see the word yoga come across the social media platform and click on it thinking it's maybe something like that it's not, like somebody practicing or teaching yoga. Well, <laughs> and I believe that because I looked at the audience, the number of watchers, and I got a huge spike as soon as I released it, like 250 people tuned in to watch my video, and all of a sudden the viewers tailed off very quickly. <laughs> Literally went like, hope they weren't too disappointed. Maybe somebody out there that needs my content, one of those, or 10 of those 250 people go, hey, it's not quite what I expected, but in some ways 
it's more than I expected. <laughs> I've got another video queued up. Oh, yes, it might be released on this very social media platform uh, this morning. <laughs> if you want to know the title. I sometimes wonder why I'm not a mega successful content creator. But the title of the next video will be Refried Beans. I don't want to give away the plot or any of the twists that might occur during my video titled Refried Beans. But let me assure you that at least in my opinion, <laughs> I think it will be a classic. I need to get a little more coffee. Oh. I talk a lot on the show about how uh, I think for me, and I always used to call it like the Tracy gene. My last name's Tracy, and my family were always did everything to excess. And it's, I think there's probably a lot of people out there that do that, and that's why there's issues with like addiction and alcoholism and obesity and gambling and what have you. And it's very easy to let your addiction or your addictive nature run wild on a uh, negative, uh, and I hate to grade habits, but I think we could probably all agree that gambling and drinking aren't positive habits generally. Let's call them bad habits. <laughs> I'll classify them as bad habits. Good morning, Chipot. Uh, so it's easy to let your mind and your addictive nature and your craving for immediate gratification run wild on uh, less than positive habits like drinking or gambling or smoking or uh, lethargy even. Or in my case, and this is where the story was coming, because when I got up to get my coffee, I saw three or four peaches sitting on the counter. And very quickly, I thought of a subject I wanted to touch on. Yesterday at the grocery store, I talk about my uh, love of ice cream and chocolate and peanut M&Ms a fair amount. And once I start, it's really quite hard to stop. It is. I almost don't even want to stop. I almost don't even want to stop. I'm like Beavis when he finds the candy in the cabinet and he just keeps going till it's all gone except I don't walk around with my shirt pulled over my head uh, I just keep eating it until I can eat no more and it's kind of gross and for a guy that believes in good habits and wants to look his best and feel his best I know massive overconsumption of things like ice cream and cookies and peanut M&M's isn't probably the way to go so it's pretty easy for me uh, to substitute it for something uh, that's more positive and has a lot more benefits. And in my case, stay tuned, it's peaches. Oh yeah, I bought like six of them yesterday. By the way, they're not that cheap. They're not that cheap even when they're on sale at the grocery store because they sell them by the pound and they're like two ninety nine a pound. And... Uh, I don't know. I got like six of them. They were all a little too firm, by the way. They were all a little too firm. What was I to do? What was I to do? I did a little squeezes. I was looking for the right ones. It was a fresh amount of peaches came out. So I bought like six. But it was a serious investment because each peach... I mean, I don't know how much a good-sized peach weighs, but I'd guess... A half a pound. So each peach was like a buck fifty. Might be cheaper to eat peanut M&M's than ice cream. 
Oh, fruit is Earth's candy, RJ. Thank you. <laughs> the slogan man. He's my slogan man and my food man, and he got to combine uh, both of them. Do I like canned peaches? Fruit salad. No, I really don't. <laughs> I really don't. And I doubt they're even good for you. I mean, they might be a little good for you, but they're soaked in uh, whatever that stuff is. Reminds me of being a kid. And I mean, being a kid's a good thing, but it reminds me of like those cups that mom had put in my lunch bag or whatever I'd take to school with me. And it'd come with like one little half maraschino cherry. Uh, they make them without the syrup now. Well, that's interesting. It's gotten better in my mind. The syrup, although gross memories, is probably fairly tasty. I probably finished it off when all the fruit little chunks were gone. Do I like plums? I think I would like plums, RJ. And as you would guess, in the produce section at my grocery store, they're sold right over there while I'm <laughs> squeezing the overly firm. And I didn't know, by the way, peaches came in multiple colors. Like there's white peaches and yellow peaches. I didn't know that till I recently came across my addiction to peaches. Uh, but the plums are often sitting right next door. They must be in the same fruit family. And I look at them, and I do like them. But I don't often buy them. I wonder why that is. Perhaps I think a uh, peach is more healthy. Perhaps a peach is more healthy. Now, RJ's asking about uh, grapes. I obviously like grapes, but I am not sure about the nutritional value of grapes. I don't think my body is getting just, and I'm not telling you from the, because I've done any research on this, other than the way I feel when I eat a lot of them. If I eat a lot of grapes, I almost get the same yucky feeling that I do when I eat a lot of candy, like a sugar high and a crash. And I'm not sure the grapes possess the fiber and um, a lot of the health benefits that other fruits might. And again, I do your own research. This is just one man's opinion at <laughs> too early in the morning on a Friday. Why is it that you think of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood when I see me? I've had that said many times, and I don't know. Mr. Rogers doesn't talk about peaches and yoga. Just a kind man, though. A kind, middle-aged white man. So there are some similarities. Hold on. <laughs> and because both Mr. Rogers and I own a pair of slippers... Uh, Stacy said, I don't even know what that word is, Stacy. It looks kind of like pilots that you're misspelling. I'll call it pilots, mangoes, red pears. Well, I'm not sure what a red pear is or what's exciting about the red pear. Uh, but I would assume I kind of enjoy pears. I kind of enjoy pears. Are those things in fruit salad, maybe? RJ said, grapes are good for vitamin K. That's about it. He's an engineer. I generally trust engineers when they say things like that. Stacy said, if wine is good for your heart, grapes must be good for your heart too. I wonder how good wine is truly for your heart. <laughs> Y'all often hear, and this is why, I don't want to get political. You'll often hear, that research suggests something. But then five years later, research might suggest the exact opposite thing. And all it means is somebody was given some money to run some tests in some university somewhere in the world. And, <laughs> you know, it could have been by the winemakers of the world <laughs> sponsored this research. And they found some easily bought 
researcher or college professor and given him a large grant and said, hey, keep crunching the numbers till you come up with some numbers that make it sound good to drink more wine. It's true. Uh, pears help with immunity. Red pears are a little sweeter. Pilots are a type of hybrid plum. Hello, Will Bilchell. Hello, Will Bilchell. Will Bilchell, I was thinking about you sometime over the last couple days. And Will Bilchell is a very kind man and a generous man. And a uh, man, I don't need to go into his personal life too far. And I really don't even know his personal life too far. Uh, but he and I have some of the same afflictions. Like we struggle with anxiety. And we sometimes struggle with uh, uh, concerns over our prostates. I think we're both middle-aged men. And I think as is common with middle-aged men, uh, we have issues with our prostates, whatever that means. But anyway, I happen to have a hunch that Will Bill Chill's a little concerned with this. And over the last couple of days, when I started rediscovering my love of saw pil palmetto, uh, I was thinking Will Bill Chill should go get himself some. So Will Bill Chill, I would recommend you scoot your butt down to the local Walgreens and take advantage of the buy one, get one sale that exists in the Chicago area Walgreens on the saw palmetto and start taking one a day and letting me know how it uh, affects you, if it makes you feel any better. I think it will. Uh, I was talking to it about my brother. I have an older brother and he and I are a lot alike in a bunch of ways. And <laughs> he'll occasionally listen to something I'm saying. The whole reason I do coffee with Ken is nobody had listened to me before. I'd espouse <laughs> droplets of goodness. And most people go, yeah, yeah whatever, Ken. I'm not going to listen to you. But I found when I do my show to a vast enough audience <laughs> or spread my shorts and YouTubes and reels and two million people might watch one of my videos, a couple people will actually listen to me and do what I say. <laughs> but my brother's a harder sell than that. I did get him to lose weight with uh, my diet <laughs> that I discovered a year ago that's similar to intermittent fasting. But I was telling him of the virtues of the saw palmetto. And he sent me a voicemail or a long text going, yeah, I'm probably not going to try that. I've done a bunch of things for taking a bunch of things, but I'm just going to try and drink less water at night. <laughs> I woke up and thought, maybe that's not enough, Scott. Maybe I'm going to have to put my foot down on this one. And since you, too, are down in Texas with Will Bill Chill, maybe you guys are going to have to get together. <laughs> and take a field trip to Walgreens and each buy the buy one, get one free bottle of saw palmetto for your prostate issues. It will help you with your peeing issues. I'm sure this is fascinating, especially to the ladies. I pose, I tell you what, if I come across something I believe in and I think can help people, I'll talk about it. Uh, I took a picture of my, I'm gonna bring it out. Let's bring her out. Oh, let's bring it out. It's like an, it's like show and tell. And keep in mind, I am not paid for this whatsoever. I'm only doing this because I think it's important. I, I think, I swear, I swear, taking it in two days has helped me. And maybe it's a placebo, but even if it's a placebo, let's roll with the placebo. I feel like I don't have to go as much. And this might not make sense to the women that are watching, and I apologize, but I'm telling you, uh, men of a certain age feel like they gotta pee a lot. And that's just not that pleasant of a feeling. And I believe, saw Palmetto told to me by my doctor about two years ago, helps with that. And helps with prostate health. Jeez. You know, I hear people, I think you're pro you can get cancer in your prostate. So it can take something that uh, aids in your healing of part of your body, do it. And I'm telling you, Will Belcho, I know you've got concerns like a lot of people do. Uh, go get some. Uh, go get some. I 
Yeah. I think it'll help. I'm going to close my brother on it harder today and say, I'm not accepting your drink less water solution. I'm putting my foot down. If I have to fly down to Texas and force feed you saw palmetto, I may just do that. I am not going to be comfortable knowing my older brother is walking around needing to pee more than he should. Bah, Shannon, bah. I'll just say bah. But anyway. Stones fan joined. I know the name Stones fan. By the way, somebody posted the video, and a lot of people talk about, you know, how Mick Jagger still running around on stage at 80 years old. Um, and uh, somebody posted a video of Rod Stewart and Billy Joel doing a concert in Detroit together. And I'll tell you what, Rod Stewart's been around quite some time as well. Maybe not quite as long as the Stones. There might be an overlap between their bands. I think a guitarist may have played for both. I've never been a huge fan of Rod Stewart. I liked the song Forever Young, which is kind of funny. Because Forever Young came out in like 1988. And it came out and uh, the video was kind of cool. And I think the song was real good. But at the time when it came out, I thought, hey, who's this Rod Stewart's back singing a song called Forever Young? He's back. I thought he'd faded away into what have you. Um... Okay, I'm going to address Shannon and uh, Stacy's concerns. They're saying, go get a test and this and that. Yeah, go get a test. But I think you're putting the horse before the cart. And if you can try something, because a lot of people won't go get tests. I can't get people to go to their doctor to get their prostates tested and checked and what have you. You know, that's something we're going to put off doing. Uh, but I can get Will Bill Chill and my brother to get a bottle of something that says it's healthy for your prostate. You know? Yeah. Ronnie Wood was in both bands. There you go, there you go. Ronnie Wood was the overlap. Where was I? Oh, back to Rod Stewart. Have I addressed the test? Why does doctor give men anxiety? Uh, eh. I know for me, I don't want to find out I have terminal cancer. <laughs> I don't even want to make an appointment. We don't like appointments. You sit in the wait. What good? It, what's? I mean, I like my doctor, but I don't. I think we don't like to make appointments. We don't even like to ask directions. So why would we like to go to a doctor and have the doctor tell us you're fat and out of shape? You need to stop drinking, stop smoking, take some saw palmetto, and do this series of tests. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's why doctors get men anxiety. Why wouldn't they? They might even stick us with needles. Good morning, Sahara. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, where was I? Rod Stewart. So back in the late 80s, he came out with the song Forever Young. And at the time, I thought he was a old man. That was 40 years ago. That was almost 40 years ago. And I saw him in concert last night via video, via the miracle of social media, singing with Billy Joel in Detroit. He must be really old by now. Age, they say, is just a number. And as we all know, 56 is the new 26. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. One more thought about Rod Stewart. 
I was born in 1968, and Rod Stewart, I don't know when his first music came out, uh, but he was definitely coming out with some music uh, in the early to mid-70s. And he sung, and back then, there weren't a variety of music stations available. You tuned into, uh, here in Chicago, I think it was like WLS 890. Everything was on AM, too. There was really no FM. And there was very little music choice. For instance, when Stayin' Alive by the Bee Gees was number one for like 50 straight weeks, they played it like three or four times an hour. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. They played the music to death and would continue to play it. They go, hell, getting a lot of requests for Stayin' Alive. Let's throw it in again. But DJ Joe, we just played it. Let's throw it in again. That's what the <laughs> viewers or listeners are requesting. So they <laughs> fed us staying alive, you know, several times an hour. And we gobbled it up. However, there was a song called by Rod Stewart that didn't touch my soul. And it kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies of the 70s. And it was the song... You're in my heart, you're in my soul, you'll be my friend till I grow old. You are my lover, you're my best friend, you're in my soul. <laughs> Must even be worse hearing me sing it. Thank you. He wrote that song about his love of soccer. Stones fan tells us Rod is 79. He was in the group Faces in 69. Travel Buddy saying as I knew all the words. I'm not sure they were the right words, but I will tell you what, again, they played the song over and over and over, and I just didn't think it was a good song to me. It was like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> I was good, and I'm a man with no hair, so I shouldn't. What's with Rod Stewart's hair? What's with Rod Stewart's hair? Looks like a porcupine. <laughs> I brought up topics that have scared away some of my viewers over the last month or so I brought up I mean I talk about the real estate business and it defends some realtors I've touched on politics that certainly a friend offends some of you viewers and I've lost some viewers on various social media platforms but now I've done it now I have gone too far I all the Rod Stewart fans out there that heard me say his hair looks like a porcupine <laughs> doot, 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 doot. Doot, 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 I thought it was cool. I spent years pouring myself into content creation, building up my audience, monetized it. Don't look now, but I make about $300 a month on social media. Oh, yes, I do. But that number is going to go to 200 100 And when the word gets out about what I said about Rod Stewart's hair, I'm going to be on the street begging people to watch my show. I mentioned it to two women at the restaurant last night. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to solicit people on the street to come into my restaurant anymore. I mean, I, it's what I do. It's who I am. But I happened, there happened to be two women looking at the sign outside my restaurant right at about the time we opened up. So, and I was standing near the front and I wanted to see if the front door was unlocked or not. So I pushed it and it turned out it was unlocked. So we were open and I go, oh, what are you two ladies doing there? Oh, we're just walking by. We're doing a little shopping. We're just reading your sign. <laughs> I may have mentioned to him how fun our store was or our restaurant was and how much fun they would have in it. And 
maybe it'd be good if they stopped just reading the sign and came in for a moment. <laughs> How many hours later? Like four and a half hours later, the women left. <laughs> I can be a really good, I can be really persuasive from time to time. Uh, good morning, Sandra Lynn. Stones fan is saying I better not mock the Stones. Well, if you're going to throw down the gauntlet, let's see what comes out. I mean, I like the Stones. I certainly like the Stones a lot more than I like Rod Stewart. Again, I, I like the song Forever Young. Don't hate me, Rod Stewart fans. I did like this. I just, what's the song, Maggie May? I think it was more the time of my life and the replay of it. Uh, there's a, I don't know. If, maybe I just don't like Rod Stewart. Maybe I can get my hands or arms or my head around that. Because there were several songs he sang. Katie followed the live creator. Well, thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. Stacy, I should get a finder's fee. And they told me not to do it. They told me not to do it. Here's his tip. And he gets half the revenue for the sales. Give me shelter. Yeah, there are a lot of... Uh, okay. I see what's happening now. We get a guy named Stones fan, and now everyone's talking without me. They don't even care what I'm saying. Stacy still cares. We're all talking about our favorite Stones song. Sympathy with the Devil. Gimme Shelter is probably my favorite. I'll tell you what. Uh, Waiting on a Friend is a great uh, Stones song. Not like a really old one, uh, but there's something about it that Makes me feel like put in a good mood. I think the video's neat. Uh, I think the video's neat. Did I go to Soldier Field this year? Are you asking me, Stones fan? Or one of your new found friends that are Stones fans? Uh, I have not been to Soldier Field this year. I did not. I haven't seen a concert. I mean, I've seen a smaller concert. I saw Big Head Todd. But that was in Naperville recently. Waiting on a friend. Yeah, there's something about it. And it's not a very typical uh, Stone song, I don't think. It's kind of a... I don't want to call it poppy, because that's going to... But it's kind of just a nice song, and the video's neat, and they're kind of hanging out, and they're just... Yeah. Uh, Katie saw Big Head Todd at Red Rocks this year. Yeah, it is. The Iron Hells Angels is security kind of paid with beer and beat up fans. Uh, yes, they did do that, Stacy, but that was in like California in the 60s. Big Head Todd's a good band. Uh, yeah. Again, I just dis discovered them like I found them, like they weren't existing till I came across them in some small hole in the wall in the bar and said, Hey. I like you guys. You big fella singing the songs. You have a cool look and a cool voice. <laughs> Let me bring you on the road and make you famous. Yeah, they had some really good songs. Uh, saw Metallica Soldier Field. Really loud. You're getting old. I feel bad about that, R. Tom. I've seen Metallica twice. And the first time... It was probably the coolest show I've ever seen. Uh, and I might have, that might have been back in the days before I stopped drinking and doing other things. But I thought it was such a cool show and Kid Rock opened and Kid Rock was amazing as well. Um, it was such a cool show, I didn't think I could handle it. And again, I might have partook in various things before I went into the show. Uh, and I saw him again maybe five or ten years later and they'd replaced their basis with the guy they have now and I went with a buddy who was really rocking out and I was kind of a dud I was kind of a dud I wasn't getting into it and uh, yeah Metallica's a cool band though but we all are getting old our time 
Katie says out in 86. I don't remember what conversation. Is that Big Head Todd? Metallica's touring now. Yeah, I know they, uh, a lot of their videos pop up. Uh, <laughs> well, Katie, I'm glad you subscribed because I'll talk about bands like Big Head Todd. Uh, what's my favorite song? They got two songs that come to mind. Uh, Big Head Todd. And one's really cool. I mean, they're both good. Somebody, Katie, tell me the two most popular Big Head Todd songs. Because if anybody out there hasn't heard of them, uh, not Sister Sweetly, uh, Bittersweet. Not Bittersweet, not Bittersweet. They got one that kind of rocks. They got one that kind of rocks. And I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, Bittersweet's okay, but it's more like Rod Stewart. <laughs> the Big Head Todd song I'm thinking of is more like Metallica or The Stones. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll think of it. Maybe somebody else will. Maybe somebody that's not doing the live show should Google top Big Head Todd songs. See what comes up. I'm drawing a blank. But it's a good song. I think I might even have it on my uh, playlist. You know, if you're invited to my playlist, you meant something to me. And although I can't remember the name of the song at this moment, but give me, cut me some slack. It's really early. I'm expecting a little help, more help from my audience. Uh, Angel Eyes became the, hey, Angel Eyes just sent me a bunch of Heart memes. I appreciate that, Angel Eyes. That is very kind of you. I appreciate the heart memes and the roses. Yeah, there's roses. Whatever happened to roses? I used to get a lot of roses. I think I might have had a... Uh, what is this? I don't even know what's happening. Rose. I, all of a sudden, my screen's filled with hearts and roses. Oh, 30 roses. That's so cool, Angel Eyes. What I think it was... <laughs> I think probably when I first started doing my show, <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for this. I lost Rod Stewart uh, audience. I'm going to get in trouble with the LGBTQT audience. I think I used to have a large gay population watching my show. And gay men are very upfront with their affection and very generous and very wondering if <laughs> I too am gay. And I'll tell you what, I feel bad for women out there because men are very upfront when they're hitting on you. <laughs> I'll get messages from guys and I'll go, ah, yeah, whatever, you do you. <laughs> it ain't my thing. And, uh, yeah. But anyway, my point was, I think the gay men that used to watch used to sit fawn on me and throw me roses very generously. I'd end up with like 76 cents at the end of every show. Somebody suggested I should be a bartender at a gay bar. <laughs> uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Just not my thing, Chip. It ain't my thing. At all. <laughs> Again, I think you all should do you. No, it's not Broken Heart Savior. Come on. Uh, it's heavy. Somebody out there, Katie, I feel like I'm putting the pressure on you. Google Big Head. It's not Bittersweet. It's not Broken Heart Savior. It's... It comes in real heavy. It comes in real heavy. I am tempted to pick up my phone and swipe away from this app, but I don't know what would happen. Bad things would happen. And go to a search engine and type in Big Head Todd songs just so if I could send the viewers roses, I can hear the song, but I can't think of the words. 
Yeah, because bitter sweet. Sweet and bitter, bitter and sweet. No, it was from the 90s. It was on the album with Bittersweet. Sorry to yell at you, Katie. I'm just frustrated that I don't... Maybe I need that. Maybe it's what I need, a prop, a backup phone. <laughs> so I can do my searching over here while my audience is just sitting there drinking their coffee. Don't worry, folks. I'll do all the work. <laughs> I'll come up with the ingenious content and do the searching. Where's RJ when I need him? I bet RJ's taking his kids to school or something. RJ usually has my back on that. I'm going to get off this show, and I'm going to find the song, and I'm going to want to gather this audience back together so I can tell you the name of the song. Totally ruining my conversation. Katie, come on. RJ, Chip. Somebody go to S S Sirius and say, hey Sirius, give us the top five Big Head Todd songs. And then type the words in. And I will tell you. I mean, I, I'm sure it's Big Head Todd. Maybe it wasn't a hit, maybe it just rocked. Chip's driving home. Circle. Circle. I think that's it. I think that's it. Doesn't it kind of rock? Doesn't it kind of rock? If anybody out there, yay, it's Circle. And I can't even think of how it goes now, but I think that's the song. Okay, okay. For anybody out there that doesn't know the band Big Head Todd, and wants to check them out, play the song Circle. I think it, yeah, it is circle because it says like life is just a circle. Yeah, no, really, I'm getting the chills. I'm getting the chills. I'm getting the chills. It wasn't a radio hit. It should have been. It's their best song. It rocks. Yeah, yeah. For anyone out there that likes, uh, uh, wants to check out a a band that isn't. I mean, they they were played at Red Rocks. Heck, they played at the last fling in Naperville like three years ago. You know they made it. You know they've been successful. I think the lead singer is a large Native American man with a cool voice. And the uh, band is, yeah, it's cool. And uh, again, circles the name of the song. Thank you, Katie. I was quite frustrated. They play Red Rocks every year, yeah, because they're from Colorado, I believe. The voice for the voiceless. See, that's the problem with RJ. I used to be able to rely on him. <laughs> but A, he's becoming a TikTok star and a salesman. But B, he's becoming the slogan master. And all he does, he used to be there for me for information, kind of like the producer of my show, and come up with answers to questions that I can't find the answers to. But now all he does is sit around and thinks about slogans for things. Oh. oh, Jimmy. I don't know enough about that to really dive into that conversation. I don't know enough about that to dive into that conversation. I mean... They never got big because they turned down big record contracts. They just wanted to change music. Do I have Diddy on my playlist? Now, okay. I'm going to show my middle-agedness and maybe my whiteness too. I'm assuming Diddy is also Puff Daddy and is Sean P. Diddy Combs. Am I right? Am I right? Look, I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to raise my street cred a little bit. <laughs> Watch out. Or I might start talking about Tupac and Biggie Smalls. And maybe that doesn't raise my street cred so much. Again, time flies pretty quickly. 
it was probably 30 years ago uh, <laughs> that, you know, the whole East Coast, West Coast thing was going down. <laughs> it was going down. You know, that's the way I talk. But I don't have Diddy on my playlist. I couldn't name one song uh, by uh, uh, Diddy or Sean Combs or Puff Daddy or whatever if we're all talking about the same person. Jamie just watched my latest video and loved it. Jamie, I'm not sure what video you're referring to. I post, I, now I like to mix it up. Now I like to mix it up. I like to post different videos on different platforms. Really comes down to how long the video is. If the video is less than a minute, I usually post it uh, on YouTube. If the video is like a minute to five minutes, I usually post it on uh, TikTok. Uh, standing at work video. I don't know. Might not have been my most recent video. But I appreciate you seeing them. I'd like to think whatever that video is. I crank out a lot of videos. Because it's easy. Because I do these lives every morning. I think most content creators just go, I don't know what to talk about today. You know, they don't, because they're not doing a live show. And they don't do a live show every day. And they go, okay, my niche is sobriety. I did a top five benefits of sobriety yesterday. And two days ago, I said, top five reasons having a hangover sucks. And three days ago, I did top five worst alcohols for your system. And four days ago, I did top five <laughs> things I do better now, now that I don't drink. And I'm not making fun of sobriety. I talk about sobriety. But I just don't... Uh, limit myself to any one thing or else I'd be sitting there going, okay, what can I say about sobriety that's going to uh, be a worthwhile video today? And we don't know what tomorrow holds. And because of that, I just kind of talk and uh, stuff comes out. Oh, when I tripped? Yeah. Good morning, Robert Patrick. Good morning, Robert Patrick. Favorite musician as actor or favorite actor as musician. Now, you guys aren't going to appreciate this, but I'm a man of a certain age. And I never watched General Hospital. But I can't help thinking, uh, what's the guy's name from General Hospital Like uh, that sang a song in like 82? And I, again, I'm being very vague. But you guys will know. He, he, Jack Wagner! Jack Wagner, Jack Wagner, that song is on my playlist. <laughs> when you push random, sometimes you'll hear like a song like Bleeding Me by Metallica on my playlist. And then uh, Jack Wagner's song will come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm going to throw Jack Wagner up as my favorite cross talent right now. And he's a hell of a golfer. He's a hell of a golfer, too. Rick Springfield, Jesse Girls, Jesse's Girl or whatever, yeah. No, but I did not say. Jamie just said I knew everyone would say Rick Springfield. I did not say Rick Springfield. I said Jack Wagner. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people know. And again, he almost had the exact same pretty boy uh, uh, actor in a soap opera turned pop star. Patrick Swayze from Dirty Dancing. I think Patrick Swayze might have had uh, prostate cancer. Kind of miss him. I mean, you know, I'm not a Dirty Dancing sort of guy. Uh, I'm not a Dirty Dancing sort of guy. <laughs> Leif Garrett. What did Leif Garrett ever do in acting other than The Outsiders? other than The Outsiders. Okay, it was pancreatic. 
But, uh, yeah, Leif Garrett was in The Outsiders with Patrick Swayze. With uh, Matt Dillon, Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez. Blues Brothers. Yeah, yeah so, so many stars in that movie. Ralph Macchio, yeah. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise was in that movie. Yeah. Air Supply is on... I've got two Air Supply songs on my playlist for those that want to know. Yes, I do. Making Love Out of Nothing at All. And, uh, I don't know, their other super big one. So, let's have a little more coffee. <laughs> I'd hate to leave you on... We better get back to talking about the stones. <laughs> I'm going to have to turn my man card in because I'm talking about Jack Wagner and uh, Air Supply. Bar, the gay bar thing. Lover Boy. Lover Boy has a couple good songs. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. TikTok now gives me a warning that uh, my... Uh, uh, <laughs> show is coming up on an hour. They, uh, I think probably some content creators might just leave their live show on. Like, <laughs> that's how desperate we are for content. Maybe just leave the live on of your room. But now is, uh, right before an hour happens, um, uh, they ask you to s slide something over and, uh, to make sure you're there. Tara Jacobs has joined. Tara, did you sleep in today? I'm gonna, okay, I've lost the LGBTQ viewers. I've lost the Rod Stewart fans. I've lost the realtors. I've lost anybody that feels too extreme either way on politics. And now I'm gonna lose Tara Jacobs because I'm gonna tease her for uh, 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 oh, she's sweet. She just sent me some heart puffs and to join my team hat. And what is that? I don't know. She's uh, more heart puffs, more heart puffs, eight bracelets. Oh, Tara Jacobs, how I've missed you. How I have missed you. I've talked for about an hour, and let me tell you, when you talk for an hour, you fast forward this video four weeks from now, I'll be sitting, maybe, oh, I want to talk about something of significance. For anyone wondering, I'm staying on an extended stay. I've been here five or six weeks. I drove across the country from Yellowstone to Naperville, Illinois, because I needed to get back into Chicago area, and I checked into an extended stay. I've been fairly enjoying it. I'm very, fairly pleased. I have people come on and hop and make fun of me for staying in a hotel. Who doesn't like staying in a hotel? Seriously. But anyway, so I've got my feet up. I've got free TV. I've got free utilities. And I've got a reasonably rate uh, studio apartment. So I'm kind of liking it. <laughs> I'm kind of liking it. However... Uh, I've been working hard. I work a lot of hours at the restaurant. My pay is fairly good. I'm covering my financial responsibilities. I have never, uh, I have never worked a job with a steady stream of income. And I wait tables probably six nights a week right now. And I do fairly okay. Don't make huge money. But if you work six nights a week and you make, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks a night, you make okay money. And you get paid a little bit by content creation as well. You make a little more money. And you cover your financial bill, uh, uh, responsibilities. And you put a roof over your head, even if it's an extended stay. And you still have a little money left over. You can start planning and dreaming and thinking of longer term steps and the very next step you're going to take. And I've been doing that. And I've been looking at like apartments for rent and homes for rent and thinking about what I can afford. And it's kind of exciting. And I found an apartment for rent near downtown Naperville that's cheaper than this and looks really nice. Could even walk to work. 
But <laughs> one snafu, one problem with this is I don't have any furniture anymore. I don't have a chair. I don't have a mattress. <laughs> I've talked about being minimalist. And my minimalism, although highly functional, it also came out of necessity. And <laughs> if I rented this apartment, <laughs> it would have absolutely nothing in it. which would be problematic. I can't tell you how many times I've had to go out and buy new plates and new silverware. There's nothing glorious about buying new that stuff, just stuff you have to have. New bottles of ketchup, things like that. A jar of mayonnaise. You know, when you have to buy everything, when you have to buy everything uh, again, it's pretty expensive. A new can opener. You know, things you don't think about. But it is kind of nice not being tied down to all the stuff that life can tie us down with. All that stuff. It is kind of nice being uh, light on your feet, if you will. If this keeps up and my audience keeps growing and I keep working six nights a week, I might end up and keep covering my financial responsibilities. I might start shoving cash in my mattress and I might end up being the wealthiest person that's ever stayed for 10 years in an extended stay. Why'd you stay there so long, Ken? Well, I never had any stuff. I was afraid to move into my own permanent place because I didn't have stuff. Katie's suggesting that I go to Facebook and use their giveaway section on donations, furniture, stuff like that. I don't know about that. I don't know about used furniture. Certainly used silverware. Used plates. Probably not my thing. Kennergy joined. Isn't that fun? Welcome aboard, Kennergy. Yeah, I know they do. I know they have deals. But either way, it's exciting. Uh, Hank Hoover wants to know how much is this? Uh, it's First of all, it's not a hotel. And the only reason I'm a little defensive is I get some of the people that don't like me very much mocking me, saying I live in a hotel. And again, I'm going to come back to What's, I mean, hotels are nice. Uh, Stacy said, owning a bed of breakfast would be fun. Meet a lot of people, enjoy coffee. It could be fun, but I would have to cook them breakfast. Yeah, I could do that too. Yeah, they do, Highland. You're right about that. Well, that's really the, that's really the need. I would love a two-bedroom. And honestly, the place I was looking at was a one-bedroom. But it was pretty nice. And I put in a request to go see it. And it was asking like 1500 bucks a month, which I think is almost surprisingly cheap. So it makes me a little bit surprised thinking either A, it's gone, or B, that the pictures aren't really what it looks like. Because it looked nice, it looked clean. And it was in a great location. It was only 1500 bucks a month. And I would think it would have been more than that. Somebody asked, what does my hotel cost? But again, I'm going to say it's an extended stay. Uh, it costs... Hey, I'll tell you what, it was... Uh, uh, when I first checked in, I checked in for a week because I didn't want to commit. And it was like uh, 70 bucks a day. And after taxes, it was like 580 for a week. And that was expensive. And uh, after two weeks of doing that, I decided to sign up for a month. And that dropped the price down to, uh, after taxes, $480 a week. So roughly two grand for a month. But then I went to uh, pay a few last week and I had a credit. And I go, what's with the credit? Why do I have a credit? Why don't I owe you more money? 
And they said, well, we refunded your taxes because you stayed longer than a month. Apparently, there's no taxes. The government doesn't charge taxes on a place if you stay longer than a month uh, because they consider it a residence or more permanent. And I mean, I get that. It makes sense. But either way, it was a really nice surprise. So suddenly I had a credit for 191 bucks. So I did not have to pay the last three days of the month. So anyway, I have now signed up for another month. So I'm going to be here at least three and a half more weeks. And uh, the cost per week will be about $400 a month. Or excuse me, a week. So about, you know, $17 for a month. Which, granted, it's nothing fancy. Uh, but it, I don't have utilities. My cable's paid. I don't have to buy furniture. I have a refrigerator. I, you know... It's a minimalist existence, but it's not, uh, uh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I'll have to, you know, when I do find a place and I do want a place, but I honestly, why would I move into a one bedroom apartment? Cause then I'd have to buy all that stuff and it wouldn't be big enough to have my kids spend, uh, the weekend. And because of that, I might have to keep putting cash in my mattress and keep building content with, or excuse me, coffee with Ken and um, keep maybe saving up a little money and keep working hard. And I'll tell you what, sometimes it's hard. Uh, again, I shoot, what time is it? 6.30. I'm working at 10.45 today and I was working at nine o'clock last night. Uh, but I'll tell you what, as I said in a video yesterday, uh, I enjoy waiting tables. I'm pretty good at it. I'm friendly. I hustle. I try real hard. The money's pretty good. And if the money's pretty good and you kind of enjoy it, it's pretty cool. And, uh, so I get to go to work today at 1045. Uh. Users suggest they could sleep in the bedroom when they come, you in the front room. Yeah, you're right about that, user, but I got two little ones. I got two little ones. One that's coming up on two, a little beautiful girl named Eve and a little boy named Doggy who's a three and a half. And uh, right now they would need like cribs uh, or, you know, more contained. They haven't moved up into the uh, to their own bed yet. Uh, but I like the way you're thinking. If they were a little bigger and they could sleep in my bed and I could go sleep on the couch, uh, I'd love to do that. Uh, but maybe where I'm at is okay right now. And maybe at $1,600 a month with utilities uh, and furnished, maybe it's okay. And uh, maybe it's okay. Yeah. Hank Hoover, what kind of restaurant? <laughs> Hank, I'd tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> I've been intentionally vague on what restaurant I work at, just for karma. Maybe I don't want to, uh, eh, for other reasons, for uh, various reasons. Uh, but it's a restaurant in downtown Naperville, fairly high end, uh, that serves great food and uh, uh, kind of a fun place to work. Really fun place to work. And again, I've been married twice. And one of both, one thing common in my wives, my past wives, were not similar at all. I don't think they would hang out very often. I don't think they have hung out very often. But who would expect your ex-wives to hang out together? Although they do have one common thing. <laughs> uh, with both, we used to like hosting parties a lot. Uh, we used to like hosting parties a lot and I'm a pretty good host. I like walking around a crowd and saying, Hey, how are you doing? You got everything you need. You need a drink. You need an appetizer, you know, having fun. And that's kind of what I'm doing is I'm waiting tables, checking in on people, making sure they're having a good time. They got everything they need. And I enjoy that. I enjoy that. So I'm almost like a professional host. If working a double, will you use the employee discount for a meal? 
I was talking about it with a couple guys last night. Uh, they often order food and the chefs come out and say, hey, because they shut down the kitchen an hour before close and want to see if anyone's ordering food. And a lot of the employees will order food every night because we get it like 50% off. And uh, I don't know. I usually don't. I usually don't. Because I don't want to bring it back to the extended stay and eat it. It's not quite as hot as it would be. Uh, but I might. I might. I'll tell you what. Our burger at 50% off is fantastic. It's like, you know, it's about what it costs at McDonald's. But it's good. Stacy suggests hotel concierge make really good tips too. I'm not looking to change. I'm not looking to change. I'm working at a place that I enjoy working, where the money's good, where they need uh, somebody willing to take a lot of hours, and I need a lot of hours. And I enjoy it, I'm good at it, and it is almost a perfect backdrop for me uh, while I build coffee with Ken. So, uh, yeah, I'm not looking to change so much, I don't think. I think I'm happy with where I'm at. Again, you know, I'm going to make a good amount of money today. And I'm working again tomorrow, and I'm working again Sunday, and I'm working six days next week. And as I was talking to a buddy, uh, I'm working a lot. I'm tired. I, You know, I'm old. I'm tired. But I need to right now. And I think there were a lot of times in my life as a realtor where I didn't have work to do and I didn't know what to do. And it's nice to be able to go in uh, and work today and know I'm going to make pretty good money and kind of enjoy what I do and feel productive and uh, like the people I work with. And uh, that feels real good. And while I'm doing all that, I'm building Coffee with Ken. And it grows every day. And I have 46 people watching me on my live show right now. If anybody new out there, is, please subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of fun doing this. I go live every morning. I post a lot of videos. They range from funny to inspirational to tear jerkers at times. Hello, Shelly. Hello, Christine. I don't know if I said hello to Christine, but hello, Shelly. And hello, Christine. You know, I think it is important to splurge once in a while, Christine. And it's not even really, the, you know, because at 50%, the burger costs like nine bucks. So it's really not even splurging. Uh, maybe it's eating it at the restaurant in a plastic thing. And getting kind of messy. I don't know. I don't know. Daisies and daffodils join. Are tea drinkers welcome? Rick, we certain you certainly are. Climb aboard, Rick. Please subscribe. Uh, it's funny. My boss's wife, who I just met last night, uh, nice woman. My boss is nice. She uh, discovered that one of her boss's employees has a show called Coffee with Ken, and asked her, asked him, "Who's this Coffee with Ken?" And she put together a little care package for me. With She's huge into tea and uh, bags her own tea and put together a couple teas for me. And a little cute, she's also really good at cooking. A really pretty delicious, oh, it was good. Chocolate with some orange filling inside. Haven't yet used the tea. Uh, oh, but I ate that chocolate. I think the reason I haven't yet used the tea, if I need to make an excuse... And I don't feel I really do because I like tea as well. Hey, Rick, thank you for subscribing. Rick, subscribe. I so appreciate that. Rick, you're my third subscribers. I think we have all three of my subscribers on at the same time. It's like we're crossing the streams. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I want to know what I can do for my subscribers to make people want to subscribe. Because right now, my subscribers, Chip, 
uh, Highlands, and Rick. My subscribers, I'd like to do something special for you. Uh, that's Kennergy asked. Cool, what does subscribing do? Right now it doesn't do anything. But I want the subscribers to tell me uh, <laughs> maybe they don't want anything. Uh, I drank Taster's Choice Freeze-Dried Instant. It was good. Uh, well, I appreciate that, Rick. I appreciate that. Uh, but I, again, I think, I've, okay, and I hate to make it about the money, but I believe, you know, it's wonderful getting people sending roses and flowers and you get, like, money for that. But that's kind of here and they're there. Uh, I enjoy the business side of uh, uh, things. It doesn't matter what. I'm fascinated by the my restaurant and how they make money and how much money they make and trying to save them money. When I worked at Target, I wanted to help their business. They did not want me to help their business, but that's neither here nor there. But as the guy whose name is on this show, Coffee with Ken, I'm curious about the business side of it too. And subscribers, somebody that sign up to pay a monthly fee and even a small monthly fee, uh, seem like a business model and something you can rely on. And if you grow and maybe get it like a thousand subscribers, suddenly you have a career. And right now I have three. So I'm 997 short of a subscriber-based career. Uh, and because of that, <laughs> I wonder, and I would feel the people that would know the best of how to attract, oh, Tara Jacobs. Tara Jacobs, I'm 996 away. Uh, the subscribers I have would know best what subscribers would want going forward. And we could set up little private chat rooms. If you were a subscriber, for instance, and you were lonely and you wanted me to send you a special message every day, I could do that. Or you were struggling with sobriety and you just wanted me to check in on a daily base or a weekly base or a monthly base or whatever you wanted, you know, I'd be happy to do that because I think I'd be providing value and I'd be giving you, you, the subscribers in my life, uh, what you want. And I'd be game for anything. I just like feeling productive. And if me sending a message, a weekly encouragement message to somebody that subscribed to my page that was trying that wanted to be I would think that's awesome and I'd feel good about doing it and it'd be a win-win or whatever so uh, right now subscribers don't get any perks or any benefits they're just making donations and I appreciate the donation uh I appreciate that, but I'd really like to know, and I'd like to provide value above and beyond this show. And I think maybe a word of encouragement to somebody that's lost somebody or struggling with anxiety or whatever. Uh, Mosey said, I can do separate lives for them sometimes. You come across as someone who people can connect to. I'd lean on that. Well, Rick, it's who I am. So I'm not really leaning on it. It's just being me. And that's what's so fun about this show. That's what's so fun about this show. I get to just be me. I think kind of what started it. Somebody said many years ago, wow, I wish I could put your energy in a bottle. I go, hey, let's do a live show. Let's bottle it. But again, uh, Mosey said I could do separate lives for them sometimes. Yeah, I would, but there's only four of them. Maybe they wouldn't be watching. It'd be just me. Hey. I'd be such an elite club. It'd be just me. And I don't know if they want separate lives. I don't know if they want separate lives. Well, I'm planted the seed. If any of you people that have subscribed, which I appreciate, comes up with anything you want, we want more lives. You want more lives. RJ wants more lives. 
RJ has a flexible job. I'm sure he gets paid like 10 times what I do, but he's able to be very flexible. <laughs> My boss isn't as flexible. I have to be in at 1045 today. I'm John Rambo. Well, welcome, John. The subscribe content needs to be strictly for subscribers. Yeah. I tried that. I did a little video for subscribers, but nobody watched it. Nobody watched it. Uh, Christine said, do I have a set time or whenever I feel like it? Well, it's whenever I wake up, Christine. And this morning I woke up at 4.30. And I laid in bed and I relaxed. And I tried to drip back off to sleep. Uh, <laughs> I tried to drip back off to sleep and that didn't happen. So I hopped on live right now. Uh, but I, when I wake up, I have my first sip of coffee. Rick said, what about lives during different hours? Late night with Ken. <sighs> well, and I could, and I've definitely gone live. i definitely gone live. Uh, maybe subscribers get a coffee with Ken mug. I mean, I like the sound of it. I mean, I'd hate to put the money on you guys, but the cop costs eight bucks. And if Will Bill Chill's still watching, shipping costs like $18. Will Bill Chill is watching. He likes yoga with Ken. It felt good. Camino for a coffee with Ken Mug. I need to get my merch going better again. Ken is not a kid and likely gets tired. Well, I'll tell you what, I work late. I mean, I it feels good getting home and laying in bed and editing videos. I gotta edit the videos. I've gotta edit the videos. I've got a problem. I've got a problem. I mean, it's growing, it's working, it's happening, but I have it's more work than you guys know editing these videos. It's not that exciting watching yourself talk. I'm going, hey, that's a funny little section on refried beans. <laughs> Let's add some words and add some music to this little snippet about refried beans and post it as a video. And I do, and all of a sudden, 2,000 people watch it. I go, wow, that was just on refried beans. So as a businessman, I see the opportunity there. Uh, I see the business opportunity there. I know this is something. <laughs> I'm just not totally sure what it is yet. How do I drink so much coffee and not be wired? Well, honestly, Jerry Sims, this is only my second cup. I'm not afraid. Well, I think you build up a tolerance. This is only my second cup. Walks around Chicago doing the same in early morning. I've seen a guy who tours L.A. at night, and he's only because he has so many followers. It just takes time, one video to go viral. I've had a video be seen two million times. Mississippi Mama Bar says, cooking classes, dares and challenges, live interviews. No, 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 and no. Your cadence is very similar to Jerry Seinfeld, I've heard. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. You know it, John Rambo. You know it, John Rambo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could keep talking, but I've already talked for an hour and 20 minutes. Maybe more. Sub, only... See, now that is interesting, just me. That is interesting. Just me said sub only mode. Only allow the subscribers to comment. 
I mean, I like the sound of it. I like the sound of it. However, it it's nice bringing in new people like here that uh I can turn it on and off mid live. It might get real quiet. But that's an idea. That's an idea. Rick suggesting I sell merch and related items and coffee. Uh, I tried that for a while, but I wasn't... Uh, I don't think the quality control was there. I think I had stuff on my site. And honestly, I didn't know how it worked. And I never... <laughs> I know people bought stuff from time to time. I even bought stuff. And I never saw any revenue from it. So something wasn't working just right. And uh, something wasn't working just right. Yeah, something wasn't working just right. So it didn't feel right. I think at some point, and this is dreamy or crazy sounding, but I'm going to have somebody that can help me with doing that stuff. Because I don't want to dive into creating merch and selling merch and uh, shipping out mugs. I just don't. Uh, what I like doing is talking to an audience. And uh, the other stuff sounds like yucky work. And at some point, I'd like somebody to help me create a store and sell quality merchandise and get it shipped out to people at a reasonable cost cost because I'd love you all to have coffee with Ken mugs uh, but honestly they cost eight dollars to make and like twenty dollars to ship and as a guy that's frugal I don't want to spend 20 bucks uh, I don't want to spend 20 bucks shipping an eight dollar mug that would drive me crazy drives me crazy just thinking about it well we've had a nice talk today. Silly Billy saying, buy him on Alibaba. The thought of that creates anxiety for me. The thought of buying the merch and selling it and shipping it and packaging it and doing all that uh, creates anxiety for me. I'd employ one of the teens. Now, that's not a horrible idea. No, it's not work is hard. This is work. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, here's my plan. I'm going to keep doing my show as it is. And eventually, I'm going to have so much cash stuffed in my mattress, uh that I'll have a staff to take care of that for me. Because I think in life, it's important to do what you enjoy and do what you love and love what you do. And if I started investigating, putting logos on mugs, and and I mean, I actually did put this logo on a mug. I just couldn't find a, a, a efficient way to ship them out. Tara's ready to be on staff. I love the sound of it, Tara. Are you good at that sort of thing? Are you good at that sort of thing? Because some people like doing it. And if you're good at that sort of thing, um, well, Tara, I'll send you a message today. On my to-do list today is sending Tara a message and seeing if we could work it out. And I, you know, I, I think there's a job there for somebody. I think this works. <laughs> I think this works and it provides value. And I think I could hire and employ people and create a business out of this. Because I think I'm pretty good at talking to the phone and I've got a lot of experiences. But I don't, I'm not good at the other stuff. And the thought of the other stuff, uh, the thought of the other stuff makes it sound not fun to me. And uh, I want it to be fun. And I want to hire people that like to do that stuff. Because then they'll be happy and they'll be best utilizing their gifts and their talents. 
And those are gifts and talents that I don't possess. And I'd rather focus on what I'm good at. And what I'm good at is this. And I'm going to grow this until I can afford to have somebody doing the other stuff for me. Tara Coffee with Ken, marketing director. We could get business cards. I had business cards for a while. I kind of had a marketing director. <laughs> she may have fired me. That are successful in what they do. And I registered CWK with the IRS. Her taxes are tough, rough for TikTokers. Well, I'll tell you what, that sounds like a really good problem to have. Right now, I've made, I think, about $100 in my career on TikTok. <laughs> I don't think taxes are going to be too problematic for me uh, on uh, uh, what have you. Well, I appreciate that, Rick. Hi, Julie from Michigan. Julie from Michigan, have you followed my page yet? I'm going to put Julie from Michigan on the spot. Julie from Michigan just joined and she waves and she's got various things and I can't see her. But hey, do you follow my page, Julie from Michigan? Poor Julie. Poor Julie. Well, could you please follow my page? I'll give you, but then I hate to tell you, I'm going to hate you up hard. I'm going to hard sell you after that. We need to partner with a local coffee shop and they serve coffee to customers in CWK mugs. I love the sound of that. Julie followed the live creator. Thank you so much for following the live creator, Julie. I feel bad soliciting Julie Harder. She's kind. She's got happiness and smiliness, and she just joined. Captain Kenny says New Jersey. Hey, Captain Kenny, I might hit you up. Welcome, Captain Kenny, my favorite New Jersey truck driver. For some reason, we're doing a uh, 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 subscriber drive. Will you please subscribe to my page, Captain Kenny? It might cost you $5.99. But I remember, I know your birthday is November 19th, and I've got it on the calendar, and I'm excited to sing your happy birthday to you. Uh, so if you could invest $5.99 in me, I'd appreciate it. Somehow, some way, you subscribe to my page. And we'll give. We don't know what those perks will be. We don't know what those perks will be, but there will be many perks. Julie says, I'm so nice. And do interviews there. Uh, an old school telethon. The captain will be 64 in November. Well, Captain Kenny, if you'd be kind enough to subscribe, I would appreciate it. I think it costs $5.99. I feel bad asking for anybody for money. But it'd be sweet. <laughs> We're doing a subscriber drive. Because if I get 1000 I'm on easy street. And the only reason I'll go in and wait tables is because I love it so much. <laughs> I'll need to do tote bags. Uh, three spots left. I love it. Tara Jacobs is a marketer. She's creating... A lack of supply. She's creating a totally false lack of supply. There's only three spots left. There are only three spots left. Get in now or you will not be able to subscribe going forward. Julie, well, thank you for uh, uh, hopping on. Get in on the ground level. Julie, thank you for following. Maybe I'll get you to subscribe next time. Tara is a marketer, a saleswoman extraordinaire. I'm going to send Tara a message today. That's my goal. That goal and posting this video to various social media platforms and uh, getting to work at 1045 and FaceTiming my uh, uh, uh Little nuggets of love in about an hour when they're waking up at their mama's house and blowing them kisses. And <laughs> Augie's in a naked face. <laughs> he likes taking off his clothes. 
He's such a little nugget of love. He'll sit there and be eating cinnamon toast or grapes or something like that, naked. What would your ticker be at CWK if it's still available? Mississippi Mama Bear. Oh, you guys want you guys want me to go public. I like the way now we've got some big thinkers out there. We'll be ringing the bell on CNBC. Ding, 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 ding. And it'll be me. CWK. Halt's opening. Massive buyer demand for the stock. I'm telling you. I am telling you. There is no cost to this. You know, it's free. And I'm generating revenue. So the margins are infinite. Uh, and I'll tell you what, if you start with no cost of goods sold and no rent per se or no expenses, no staff, and all revenue, uh, you know, I think it's a really good business uh, model to start. And if you love doing it and people get value from watching it, and it grows every day. I tell you what, you got the makings of a business there. Uh, and all you got to focus on is growth. And I think the sales will happen and the revenue will happen. And that's kind of what I've been doing for years. And it's starting to get some traction and starting to generate some revenue and starting to generate some more interest to the point that we're joking about IPOs and hiring Terra to do all sorts of things. Tara, I don't expect a whole lot of our conversation, but as soon as I get off, I'm going to send you a message because are you thirsty for more CWK? Subscribe now. Oh, yeah, I like it. I like it. That's a slogan. You're stepping on RJ stones. Going to need a P.O. box now. You're right about that. You're right about that. Should I do a P.O. box? It was more expensive. I could get a P.O. box today. It was more expensive here uh, than it was in Yellowstone. It was like 40 bucks for six months in Yellowstone. I really like that value. It's much more than that here. All right. All right. Okay. I've got two things to do today that I'm going to tell you about. I'm going to message Tara and I'm going to go to work early and get myself set up with a... Uh, uh, P.O. Box. So that's what I'm going to do. Those are my two do-dos today. I mean, I got other to-dos. But those are my two I'm going to commit to you guys about. Uh, sign up for a P.O. Box and uh, message Tara. But uh, anyway, this has been fun. This has been fun. We all have things we need to do today. I got a message Tara. And uh, post this video and uh, eat some fruit and get started with my day. And uh, where does my mail go now? Do they have mailboxes at extended stay? I don't know where my mail goes right now. I don't know where it goes. I'm kind of enjoying not getting any mail. <laughs> Can't be the first time. When they say off the grid, maybe that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't let people know where I am. The only place to f find me. Uh, don't let your coffee cup go dry. Subscribe. Oh, don't let your coffee cup go dry. Subscribe. I love it, Rick. We've got some marketing geniuses here. Viewers could send packages. Okay, well, Stacy, I appreciate that. I appreciate it all. You guys have sent me off on a further business direction today. Uh, so I'm going to send Tara a message. Say, hey, Tara, let's chat about uh, employment opportunities here at Coffee with Ken. And then I'm going to post this video. And then I'm going to leave for work early because I can stop by the post office on the way. And no matter the cost, I'm going to sign up for a P.O. box. Uh, a P.O. box. Has September been a huge month for growth so far? 
Uh, I would say, I don't know as much about growth. I think on one platform, I, I've lost subscribers. On two platforms, I've certainly grown subscribers. Uh, revenue's hitting all-time highs every day, and that's kind of fun. Uh, but it's been a really good month so far, and I'm really enjoying it. And I wouldn't be doing it without you guys and joining me on uh, uh, Coffee with Ken on uh, every morning. And I appreciate you. And I've had fun today, and I've talked way longer than I should have. But every once in a while, it's okay to be naughty <laughs> and talk longer than we should. And uh, I appreciate you, and I uh, really do. And I'm excited about my day, and I'm excited about grabbing a peach, an apple, and an orange, some more coffee, and maybe a little cottage cheese. Who says it can only be an hour? Well, I mean, again, I got to edit these videos. And if <laughs> I'm four weeks behind, I'm four weeks behind. Plus, I got things I got to do today. I appreciate you wanting more. And I appreciate your uh, encouragement, Stacey. I'm going to have a great shift today. And I'm going to have a great day today. And I hope you have a great day today. And I want to thank... Uh, Rick for subscribing to my page and I want to thank you all for watching and I hope your week is going well and I hope uh, uh, you're feeling good and I hope you are loving yourself and I hope you are forgiving yourself and I hope you tune in tomorrow for more Coffee with Ken and as always, I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Doop, doop, doop.